This is Karen Barr, an American journalist who is seeking a way to honor the work she loved and still dedicate a lot of time to her family. So this was her solution. In 1990, she created Raising Arizona Kids magazine. We were working around the clock to get that first issue out. And I remember coming back from the printer and thinking, you know, whew, this tremendous sense of relief. And then, oh no, I have to do this again next month. Rack, like all publications, has weathered the battering of rapidly changing technology. Over the years, of course, we've had to adapt as all other media entities have had to adapt and moving our product from a print-only product with lead times of two, three months to get stories pulled together to a, a daily uh, crunch of getting information out online. Every day, the employees approach their work with pride and purpose, informing and educating Arizona parents. As managing editor, I work with um, many different writers um, in trying to um, perfect their craft the way I was helped. It's just a nice feeling to know that we're giving parents information of how to be with their family and not just parenting tips, but just quality family time where we can provide them with the necessary tools that they have and places to go with their family and things to do with their family. I am working with other writers to um, say things in the best way they can, to do their best with writing the best they can. 35,000 magazines per month and eight employees, Rack is focused on the future and the challenges ahead. I think that with the growth of digital, digital distribution and social media, um, parents almost have too much information at their disposal and I think now the challenge becomes filtering that information so that they know what to pay attention to. Subscriptions, stories, deadlines. Some things never change for journalists. But for Karen Barr, she's continuously reinventing her magazine to keep up with an ever-changing world and the needs of everyday parents. I'm in the studio today with Karen Barr. So for anybody who isn't familiar with your magazine, can you give us some insight into the background? How did this all come to be? Sure, well, I always look at it as a way to blend all the pieces of who I was at that time. I had been a journalist. I had worked for two different newspapers. I had recently finished an MBA, and I had two little boys <laughs> at, that I was home taking care of. And I was also part of a parenting group that was all about giving local parents information and resources about raising their children. So I guess it was just added all up. Hmm, I'm a journalist, <laughs> I have some business background, I'm a mom, I have this access to this organization that's so helpful. And it just seemed to be the logical thing. Mothers were so hungry for information at that time. Mm -hmm. So you have a pretty extensive journalistic background then, so this sort of was just perfect for you. I knew how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I had never run a business before, so that part I had to learn um, the hard way, but the publication part of it was very fun and I've been doing it forever. So Oh, that's fantastic. So do you have a specific mission with this magazine? Yes, our mission is to connect local parents to local expertise and resources so that we can help parents find the information and the experts that they need to resolve any challenges that they're having with their parenting or their children um, or just even to enhance their child's experience or education. Definitely. What are some of the things that you include in the magazine? What information are you giving to parents? Sure. Well, we're anchored by the Valley's most comprehensive <laughs> calendar of events for families. So if you're looking for things to do with a young family, this is the place to go. That's we, perfect. Yeah, our calendar editor just works so hard to do that. Um, and then we have stories about education, health, um, sports sometimes, youth, fitness, those kinds of things. Um, we run directories throughout the year to help parents find camps for mm -hmm. the summer or birthday party <laughs> venues for a birthday party celebration. Mm -hmm. um, we put together events throughout the year that also help parents find information, a uh, summer camp fair we do every year, and a special needs resource fair to help parents with children who have special needs find the information and support they need. So it sounds like this magazine really caters to the parents and not so much the children, is that correct? It's definitely a magazine for moms and dads, yes. Primarily moms, but dads <laughs> look at it too, I'm sure. <laughs> what are some of the resources you guys use to 
portray this information? I mean, I remember you mentioning something about talking to pediatrics and other doctors. Yes, absolutely. Well, we approach it very journalistically because, of course, that's my background. Mm -hmm. um, we approach it as any newspaper reporter would approach a story in the sense that we are not the experts here. This is very different from, say, a mommy blog or something where someone is just writing about their experience. Mm -hmm. This is reporting information about a child's health, uh, mental health, well-being. Um, parenting strategies, we're going straight to the experts who have the answers and asking them to give that information to us so that we can share it with families. Absolutely. Why would you say somebody would choose to go to your magazine as opposed to other sources of media out there? Well, I would say because, first of all, we filter the local information. Mm -hmm. um, I think what has changed so much in the 26 years that I've been doing this is when I got started, there was no information for parents <laughs> and people were just so hungry to find resources. Now there's too much information and it's available every way you can possibly imagine to get it. And so now what I hear when I'm talking to young parents is there's so much out there. I don't even know what to believe and what's accurate and what's not. And um, you know, the sources to them are so important. They want trusted resources. They want vetted information. They want to know what is best practices mm -hmm. in raising their children. And so we work with the American Academy of Pediatrics, the mm -hmm. Arizona chapter, to uh, make sure that that kind of information is put in for health, for education. We work with the Arizona Department of Education and the different wow. school districts and people to make sure that we are getting the current information for families. Absolutely. Just as a journalist or a journalist would, you guys really take the fact check approach. We fact check. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely fact check. So then obviously you must have a passion for this. Where does this passion come from? What are you oh. enthusiastic about? What gets you up in the morning to do this? Well, I have always loved telling stories and I think that's why I got into journalism in the first place. And then when you become a parent and you realize how deeply personal everything is and how emotional everything is and how many others out there are struggling with the same things that you are struggling with. It's, it was this need to create kind of a place for sharing those ideas mm -hmm. that was accessible to a large number of people and I think that's what got us started. And then unfortunately you start something and it kind of takes on a life of its own and before you know it you're chasing it instead, <laughs> of, instead of guiding it, it's guiding you. <laughs> So my challenge has always been uh, trying to reestablish the balance between family and work because when you own a business it can quickly take over. So something that I've actually been kind of curious about myself is where do you guys find your stories? I was flipping through the magazine and there are just some unbelievable touching stories in there and I'm curious as to where you guys find them. I mean, of course, like any media entity, we get press releases mm -hmm. and those give us ideas and, pr and PR people are trying to reach out to us. But the ones that mean the most to me are the ones where I might have just met somebody. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I attended an event last week and met an amazing young mom who has a child with multiple disabilities mm -hmm. and she told her story to this group of people about all the challenges she had gone through to get her son the services and supports oh, he needed. Wow. If one child got some support that they needed, some intervention that they needed, mm -hmm. um, something that will help them move forward more productively in mm -hmm. life, then that that's everything. Oh, that's absolutely. Everything. It really makes you feel at the end of the day that you made a difference. Absolutely. And you, and you don't always know how you're impacting people. Mm -hmm. No one in media really does. You just hope that the effort that you're putting forth and the work that you're putting out there mm -hmm. will make some good things happen. Absolutely. Karen, I want to thank you again so much for being on this show. Raising Arizona Kids, everybody, is the magazine, and you can check out more information for them online at RaisingArizonaKids.com. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night.